Hey guys, it's me Mohammed Bandadi from the Soft Learners, and in this video, we are going to discuss another class of G-protein coupled receptors called as GQ. Now we are going to discuss GQ. So far, we have discussed G-stimulatory and G-inhibitory, but this class is quite different from the rest of the two. Now consider this a cell. Here is our cell. Now a serpentine receptor would be attached on the cell membrane. Here is our serpentine receptor. Two. Now having two domains, ligand binding domain and effector domain, that would be a ligand binding domain and that would be a effector domain. Now uh, it is also coupled with a G protein having three subunits. Here is our G protein having three subunits. It's alpha subunit, beta subunit and gamma subunit now here also in, in an uh, inactive form a gdp molecule will be attached with a alpha subunit here is our gdp molecule here is our alpha subunit beta subunit and gamma subunit so whenever whenever a ligand a ligand will attach here consider this our ligand whenever it will attach here this this uh, effector domain have some effect on the this coupled G protein. The beta and gamma subunits will be separated. Beta and gamma subunits will be separated, and uh, our GDP will be replaced by another molecule called as GTP. So our GDP is going to be replaced by GTP. Now, whenever a GTP will be attached to this uh, alpha subunit, it will be activated. Now this activated alpha subunit will uh, go and attack to another protein present on a cell membrane. In the case of GQ protein coupled receptors, this protein, this this is a unique protein, and this protein is called phospholipase C, called as phospholipase C. So whenever an activated alpha subunit will attack a phospholipase C. A protein present in the cell membrane and uh, the phospholipase C will activate it and uh, it will it will it will attack another protein another very unique protein present in a cell membrane there is our another unique protein here uh, ligand attached alpha subunit activated uh, it activate in uh, return of phospholipase C and phospholipase C will attack on another protein called as a phosphotidyl inositol diphosphate, also known as PIP2. PIP2. Now, whenever phospholipase C will attack on our PIP2, PIP2 will be separated into two components. One, one is an uh, one component is called inositol diphosphate, also known as IP3. It is a, a water soluble uh, component, so it will be uh, uh, it will uh, it will be it, it will come to into the cytosol. The other is li lipid soluble, and it will come to the uh, it will remain in the cell membrane. The other component is diacyl glycerol D A G. So PIP2 is separated into two components. First is IP3, and the other is D A G. Now these two these two have very specific effects on the cell membrane. First, we will discuss the effects of the IP3. Now IP3 has an effect on the endoplasmic reticulum. Suppose this is our endoplasmic reticulum present in the cell. Here, here is our endoplasmic reticulum. Now this endoplasmic reticulum have very special channels on it these are our channels <coughs> these are actually calcium channels what are these calcium channels these are calcium channels as we know endoplasmic reticulum is filled with calcium whenever whenever ip3 attach on these calcium channels these calcium channels will be activated and the calcium efflux from the endoplasmic reticulum into the cell will be carried out <coughs> so there will be more calcium into the cytosol 
as a result ip3 whenever ip3 will attach on these um, uh, channels calcium from the cell will come into the uh, cal uh, calcium from the endoplasmic reticulum will come into the cell now here is increase uh, the, the concentration of the calcium in the cell goes on increasing now this this calcium will in return bind to another protein present in the cell there is another protein present in the cell called as calc modulin now this calcium bind to cal modulin and activate it forming calcium cal modulin complex whenever calcium can cal modulin complex here is our calcium cal modulin complex now this calcium cal modulin complex <coughs> will activate another enzyme called as calcium cal modulin protein kinase this will uh, activate another enzyme called as calcium cal modulin protein kinase also known as CAMPK calcium cal modulin protein kinase here is our another enzyme when this enzyme will be activated <coughs> it will uh, start phosphorylations of different enzymes it will start phosphorylation phosphorylation of different uh, enzymes phosphorylation of uh, different um, transcriptional factors uh, phosphorylation of different uh, transcriptional factors and also phosphorylation of some ion channels present in the cell so what cmpk will do it will start phosphorylation of different enzyme phosphorylation of this different transcriptional factors and phosphorylation of different ion channels whenever whenever enzymes will be phosphorylated they will active and they will start changing the metabolism of the cell and whenever transcriptional factor will be uh, phosphorylated they will go into the nucleus they will go into the nucleus and they change they start uh, the, they will start altering the genetic uh, machinery of the cell making more proteins altering genetic machinery and whenever these channel will be activated these are actually calcium channels they brought calcium from out extracellular environment into the intracellular environment so our ligand attached ligand activated alpha subunit alpha subunit in uh, return activated plc plc activate uh, the splitted pip2 into two components first is ip3 second is dag ip3 in return activate an, uh, a protein channel uh, uh, an ion channel present in the endoplasmic reticulum this end channel in return start uh, bringing out calcium from the endoplasmic reticulum and this calcium when bind with the calmodulin this calmodulin uh, uh, when uh, activated by calcium this activated calmodulin uh, protein complex uh, activate another enzyme called as calcium calmodulin protein kinase whenever calcium calmodulin protein kinase is activated it start phosphorylation of different enzymes which alter the metabolism it start phosphorylation of different transcriptional factors which in return uh, goes to the nucleus and alter the genetic machinery of the cell and the third uh, thing they do is uh, the phosphorylation of uh, different uh, ion channels present in the cell membrane these are actually calcium ion channels and calcium will come into the cell so this calcium will bind to the myosin like chains and perform the um, uh, work of contraction so actually gq protein coupled receptors are present on smooth muscles they are present on smooth muscles uh, the calcium uh, calmodulin protein kinase will when start phosphorylation of different components they will start phosphorylation of different enzymes they will start phosphorylation of different transcriptional factors of different ion channels and in return the smooth muscles uh, undergoes contraction now let's not forget our friend here dag diacylglycerol now diacylglycerol also have some <coughs> work to do into the cell now this diacylglycerol activates and other another protein another enzyme present in the cell called as now uh, 
is our enzyme called as protein kinase C. Now this protein kinase C will also start phosphorylation of different enzymes of different transcriptional factor and of also of different ion channels. It will do the same work as the CAMPK will uh, was doing. Restore phosphorylation of different enzyme. Phosphorylation of different transcriptional factors and phosphorylation of different ion channels. Now these ion channels start moving calcium into the cell. Calcium into the cell. They start they alter the genetic machinery and they alter the metabolism of the cell. So in this way, our GQ protein coupled receptors are acting. If, uh, let me just repeat the whole scenario. Our ligand attached on the serpentine receptors. There is a G, a G protein linked called as GQ protein. This GQ protein uh, when activated, uh, it uh, the beta and gamma subunits are separated. Beta and gamma subunits are separated. Uh, GDP is replaced by GDP. When this activated alpha subunit attack on an enzyme known as phospholipase C, phospholipase C will attack on PIP2. PIP2 will be separated into two components, IP3 and DAG. This IP3 will attack on endoplasmic reticulum and start uh, moving the calcium from the endoplasmic uh, reticulum into the cytoplasm. This calcium will attack on uh, cal calmodulin and uh, form a calmodulin, calcium calmodulin complex, which activate another enzyme called as calcium calmodulin protein kinase. This pro calcium calmodulin protein kinase will start phosphorylation of different enzymes of different transcriptional factors and different ion channels. While the other diacylglycerol DAG present in the lipid membrane, cell membrane, will activate another enzyme called as protein kinase C. This protein kinase C also starts phosphorylation of different enzymes of different transcriptional factors and different ion channels. So this is all from this video. In the next video, I will tell you how different, uh, what types of ligands uh, are there and in which class they are uh, divided, they are being classified. Uh, so this is all from this video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe our channel. Thank you.